And Senator Coates. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Dr. Ember, thank you for being willing to testify here. I know you didn't have to do this, and I think it's been very constructive to hear um, the reforms that you have uh, uh, initiated and those that you hope to uh, initiate. And it sounds like it's, uh, there's some real positive uh, things that are happening relative to the issues that are, as you have acknowledged, are, are challenges for the NCAA and challenges for the universities and challenges for our committee. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for uh, following through on your commitment to me and to others that, you know, we're going to have a, uh, a good, solid, uh, uh, non-theatrical uh, investigation and, and uh, committee process here we're, uh, because I think we're all on the same page in terms of how can we best preserve uh, the student athlete, best provide for them, uh, how do we address some of the challenges that we're facing today with the revenues and so forth. And uh, I think this is a very constructive uh, effort that, that, that we're undertake, undertaking here. And I thank you for uh, pulling all that to, together. Uh, here's what I'm hearing, uh, and I'm <clears throat> leading to a question here. But I'm hearing from our witnesses uh, that there are many positive things happening and many positive results coming from being a student athlete. The opportunities that are available to athletes that otherwise would not have been able to get a college experience and a college degree and education process. Um, the uh, 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 list of uh, reforms that uh, Dr. Emmert has uh, basically said, uh, these are his proposals. Um, and I think it goes right to what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, scholarship for life, uh, the full and actual cost of attendance payment, um, leading and taking the lead in areas of health and safety, uh, addressing the sexual assault issue, which goes across all as aspects of, of athletics, but also college uh, experience. Um, uh, it's not limited to just one. Medical insurance, dealing with those questions, academic priorities, and we talked about the time issue. Uh, support for Title IX. I mean, it's been remarkable what has happened under Title IX in terms of the number of women that are able to participate in athletics, gain scholarships. Many of those also uh, would not have perhaps had a chance uh, without uh, scholarship help and support. Uh, the um, um, vast majority of schools that, uh, whether Division II or Division III or not in the top 65, uh, that offer all these opportunities. Uh, it's, it's something we want to preserve. It's something we want to uh, improve. Uh, I think we have a president of the NCAA who is a reformer, known as that. That's why he was hired. Uh, he's taken steps already and willing and to take uh, significant steps forward. Now, obviously, it goes to this question, Dr. Emmert, of the 65. Um, I was um, uh, encouraged by your response to the chairman's question relative to their interest uh, in addressing these issues. Now, um, uh, it's one thing to say that they're willing to do it. It's another thing to do it. So we wish you success, but we understand that it's, you're the proposal, uh, you're the initiator, uh, but they're the decision makers. And so I hope, Mr. Chairman, and over some period of time here, re hopefully relatively soon, we can get a positive uh, result uh, from that effort, because I think that's really where the, these, uh, these major issues Fall. But Dr. Emmert, would you just uh, give us one more shot at the, the ability to address what I think goes to the root of the problem, and but also to the root of the solution, and that is the, the top 65, which are the revenue generators. Uh, uh, what we don't want to jeopardate is the, the other thousand or so that, that aren't and put them in a situation where they won't be able to fulfill Title IX or they won't be able to fulfill the, the level of sports that gives so many young people uh, opportunities to participate and get a college education at the same time. Yes, Mr. Chairman and Senator Coates, I, I think you're asking one of the, well, two of the most important questions. And first is a recognition that a hundred or so years ago when the NCA was created, it was, as, as uh, Mr. Branch pointed out, created with some impetus from the White House and, and Congress because of all the challenges in, in college sports. And at that time it was determined that college sports should be appropriately self-governed, that the universities themselves were capable of 
providing the right kind of structure and governance and oversight um, to, uh, to make college sports work effectively for young men and young women. And, and we're at a point now where, where we're going to see yet again whether or not that self-governance system works. I have confidence because I know met most of these presidents as colleagues and I know their interests and their considerations and concerns. Uh, that I, I, that provides me with confidence that they want to move forward on the agendas that I described, plus more, uh, in the in the coming weeks and months. Now, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, this hearing is a useful um, cattle prod, if you will, to make sure that everyone understands that the world is watching, the the U.S. Senate is watching, and everyone's paying attention to what universities are going to do to address these very real and significant issues. Uh, I think all of those things combined uh, give me uh, some very positive belief that we're going to wind up in the right place in a matter of months. Now, if we're not, then we have another conversation that we can have, I'm sure, and I, I'm, I have no doubt, sir, that, you're, that you or your successors will, uh, will make sure that we have that conversation, but uh, I have no concerns about this body or any other trying to hold universities accountable for the things that they need to and should be doing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, my time has expired.